Okay, and welcome to this month's masterclass all about hyperhidrosis, which is um, the medical term for excessive sweating. So if you sweat too much under your arms or um, on your palms or your soles or even your face, um, that is called hyperhidrosis, so too much sweating. Now everyone sweats, it's a normal part of being a human. You have sweat glands over your, all over your body. You actually have two to four million sweat glands distributed all over your body. And uh, they're found in large numbers on the soles of your feet, your palms, your forehead, your cheeks, and of course in your armpits. Um, now, treatment of it is possible, but it does depend on um, where the sweating is happening and of course on you as the patient. So if there's any other medical issues, um, anything that could be contributing it to driving it, for the purpose of this masterclass, I'm assuming that um, there is no underlying reason why you have hyperhidrosis, it's just part of who you are. So let's look at um, the treatments uh, for hyperhidrosis. There's four main kind of categories of treatments. I'm gonna start from the simplest and go down to the perhaps least simple. So the simplest is of course your general antiperspirant, which is an affordable, easy to use uh, product. You can just buy it at any pharmacy or any, any, any supermarket and you apply it in the morning or some use at night. Um, so they work overnight. And basically what happens is it sits on your skin and it blocks the um, sweat gland. So it basically plugs the sweat gland and stops the sweat from coming out to basically produce less sweat. They can be irritating to skin. Um, Importantly, there's no evidence that these kind of antiperspirants that you can just buy over the counter, um, or even the ones we prescribe, uh, that they increase, they do not increase the risk of breast cancer or the risk of Alzheimer's disease. So that's quite important because often I get that question, like, is antiperspirant safe to use? And it is indeed safe to use. The next step after that um, is something called iontophoresis. Um, so if you sweat excessively from uh, your hands or your feet, this is an option for that type of sweating. Um, what happens is you immerse your hands or your feet, or both, in a shallow pan of water, and then an electric current um, is uh, kind of sent through the water. So a low voltage current is sent through the water, um, and this shuts down the sweat glands temporarily. So most people need six to 10 treatments, um, which can take 20 to 40 minutes at a time to really see a result, and then you start by doing it two to three times a week. Once you see the results, then you repeat the treatment every time you need it to maintain results, usually about once a week. Usually in the NHS here in the UK, you can start this treatment in the NHS in centers that have iontophoresis, um, and then you can buy a machine at home. They usually cost about 200 pounds. I think they're made by Philips. So that can be quite a useful way to treat your hyperhidrosis yourself at home if it's of your um, palms and your soles, your hands and your feet. Then the next one up, um, which gets a little more complicated and possibly a little more expensive, is the use of neurotoxin or botulinum toxin injections. Um, this is an FDA approved treatment uh, for hyperhidrosis of the underarms, but you can also use Botox um, to inject other parts of uh, the body, like the palms, for example, or the face even if you have facial sweating. Now how it works is it blocks the chemical um, called acetylcholine um, from leaving the nerve ending and stimulating the sweat gland. Now, um, you have lots of nerves in your body, and I'm just gonna try to make this as uh, kind of simple as possible. So um, acetylcholine is one of the neurotransmitters re released between the nerve and its acting tissue. So whether it's like a muscle or a sweat gland, um, that's the neurotransmitter. So it tells the sweat gland to produce sweat when you need to do it. Um, if you block uh, the binding of acetylcholine to a receptor in a nerve cell, you then stop that message from being sent. So um, what botulinum toxin does or Botox is it blocks that neurotransmitter from um, giving that signal to the nerve so that no sweat is produced. Um, it takes about five days to see a result after treatment and it usually lasts for about four to six months. It is a little bit expensive um, and it can be a little bit painful, um, definitely if you inject into the underarm. So uh, yeah, also if you inject, it into, inject it into the palms, it can actually be extremely painful. The main side effect of it when injected into the palms is it can affect the small muscles of the hand. And remember that Botox also stops muscles from working. So if you inject it into the hands and it goes into the muscles of the hands, you can have problems with your hands. Um, this is very rare and very uncommon, but if you're a patient or you are a pianist or a, I don't know, a chef, uh, or you do something with your hands uh, for a living, that might not be the best option for you. Now the fourth kind of category of treatment is tablet treatment. And there is a licensed treatment for excess sweating called probanthin or pro propylene bromide, propanthylene bromide, apologies. And 
uh, probethin is an anticholinergic drug. So it blocks the, um, the acetylcholine receptor from acting on the nerve. So similar to what Botox does, except it's a tablet. Um, now, now you have to think about what, what acetylcholine does. So um, it's, it inhibits the sympathetic nervous system from, uh, or parasympathetic nervous system um, from acting. So um, basically, if you think about what happens in the fight or flight response, so like, for example, if a dog gets scared, or if you get nervous, you can often um, salivate you can uh, have a have loose stool and you may have to wee more. It can also give you a bit of tummy, tummy upset. So if you block that system, so of course, and sweating is part of that too. So part of your nerve reaction, getting nervous um, is sweating, uh, foaming at the mouth or having increased saliva, um, having to go to the loo, having, you know, open your bowels and so on. So if you block that system, so you block that nervous response, um, you will therefore decrease the amount of sweating that happens. Now, you have to remember that a tablet works on your whole body, so not just on your sweat glands. So if you do block all those nerves from transmitting, then you, you may suffer from dry mouth, constipation, uh, urinary retention, uh, perhaps dry eyes. Um, so it can do all of that as well, but usually it's really dose dependent. So the dose required for um, sweating purposes or to decrease sweating is usually less than that that causes all those other side effects. So most patients are able to tolerate it well, but it's something to discuss with your doctor. So basically in summary, if you have excess sweating as a problem, whether it's under your arms, your palms, your soles, or your face, you have a good number of options with regards to treatment. And they can start very inexpensive and simple like antiperspirants, all the way into uh, taking tablets on a, on a regular daily basis if you need that. Um, definitely talk to your doctor about it. Is it. If it's something that really affects your quality of life, as it does for many people, um, because excess sweating can really not be um, a nice thing to have, uh, talk to your doctor about what treatment may be right for you because there are definitely treatments out there, as I've just listed, um, that are very effective and can really um, change people's lives. So I hope that was helpful.